Okay, um, we're recording. Welcome everybody out. Um, this is our, our class tonight is honoring your greatest asset, um, you. And it's all about personal development. It's all about um, building yourself because you, um, you know, you're the pair of essential oil sharing business. Um, you're the greatest asset in that business. You know, we don't have a lot of um, collateral or anything that we need in this business, but, um, but yourself. Yeah. Yeah. The better you are and the better skills you have, the better you'll be able to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. So when I first started in doTERRA, that was one of the first things I learned. People said to invest in your business. And part of that investment is investing in yourself. And, you know, at first I didn't, I, I, don't, I guess I was ignorant and I didn't really understand that. Um, and I had people, one of um, my upline, Debbie Gordon, she actually one time I, invited me to come to Utah because I was teaching in Ohio and signing up people, but I wasn't sure what I was doing. And she said, look, um, she doesn't know how to help me besides, you know, bringing me to Utah to join a, a what they call a diamond university. So it's like a two day thing that you just you attend the office and the office was really small <laughs> at the time. And so we had maybe 40 people there, but you know, it was really, um, yeah, like, like, it, was, yeah. it was a small office building main <laughs> street. And yeah. So we went through, hi, hi, Dr. Hill. Hi. Yeah, hi <laughs> Very so, approachable. Yeah. Offices right there. And, um, yeah. And I, I've never left my kids before. And, um, you know, I found really cheap tickets and Debbie reimbursed me, you know, for it. But it was, you know, I wanted her investment in me to be worth it. So I tried to get a lot out of it. And after that, I was like, I got it. I got the big picture. And um, I went back and uh, really, you know, did very well in the business and continued on. So that's what we want to provide tonight to give everybody a glimpse of how important it is to develop you. And because um, the, that's going to be your determinating um, factor or your success. Okay. So I think that, that was a standout at convention that each person that went up and spoke was so different from the other person. Yes. Yeah. And it was great. You'll find your niche. And once you've got that, yes, go for it. And, you know, it's wonderful to have people who don't know what they're doing and then they end up, succeeding and making everybody else in the audience go, I want to get up there. I want to share my story. I don't know what I'm doing either. <laughs> um, but you can see like all week long after we came back from convention, my brother-in-law, my sister, they just couldn't stop talking and sharing. My parents were talking about, um, you know, the story that they were sharing and they just went back and forth and then my sister-in-law joined and, you know, they were so um, inspired by these people because their journey is just uh, just like them. They, they didn't know what they were doing and um, then they figured it out. So they felt really connected. Yeah. Um, so this one gentleman, he's like a big rank in doTERRA. He said, doTERRA is a personal development program wrapped up in an essential oil company. <laughs> so yeah, and it really is. Uh, everyone that I have ever worked with and mentored, um, they they grow personally, and they then and the business grows too. The people that refuse to change and refuse to grow, and insist on doing it the same old way, they will be frustrated. I have I've seen people frustrated over and over, and I'm like, just, just listen. <laughs> Here are some things that we learned. Um, you know, they just come to the table. I know business. I know da 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 da. Why? Why can't I sell retail? What can you know? All these things that I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> okay, you know, if you can't change, then um, your business is not going to grow. I'm afraid. So and this is so true. And you find that right? You find that you've changed since you've started DoTerra. Oh yeah. Yeah. So how how have you changed? Which one? <laughs> so one of you. I'm, I'm really finding who I am again. I did have it once. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I'm starting to believe in myself. So many things. I'm around such positive people. Um, part, of, part of a 
big family. And that's what you feel at convention too. This, we are part of something that is really special and we're very lucky to be part of it. Mm-hmm. And if we go with it, the sky's the limit and, yes, we can grow so much personally. Yeah, absolutely right. I met people at convention that I didn't even, um, they're not on my team or anything, but they just, like, heard of me or, you know, see me do something and they got inspired and they came up and gave me hugs. And I, I was like, wow, you know, it's like one big family. They just feel free to come up and hug me and tell me stuff. And then they like me on Facebook and friend me on Facebook. And I'm thinking, great. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> they like us. Yeah, that's right. Well, and going and, and doing this wonderful thing together. So Desiree? I mean, it's totally based around personal development and, I think more recently, it's really been about the emotional aspect for me, um, just working with, you know, you can be in this negative mindset, but it really pushes you to be in a more positive light and be more positive because if you're not being and putting yourself in that positive light, then you don't go anywhere. And so for me personally right now, I'm really working on those emotional aspects of this whole thing of personal development, so... Yeah, and I'm so proud of you because it's uncomfortable. It is. Change is uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But you're such a good leader. (laughs) Thank you. You you, you set the example. I can do it. You can do it. (laughs) Yes. We have a fantastic experience because yesterday, um, coincidentally, one of Desiree's leaders was holidaying in Destin, Florida. Yes. It was pouring rain, and because Desiree said, go see Jade, you know, like, okay, she's driving, she's texting me, I'm lost, what do I do? And it rocks up, and we connected, and we had the best evening, you know, and this girl's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that, but yes, and it was lots of emotional healing, and just eye-opening, because we connected, but it's like what, you know, Lucy said, we are one big family. And we already know each other, even though this is the first time we met. <laughs> but but without realising, because you are so enthusiastic about you, you do attract those people. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. I want what you got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, Desiree, her mum was with her, and her mum's like, I am sold. <laughs> I'm like, I am sold. I'm totally sold now. <laughs> so it was so fun. And awesome. because of your leadership, You know, it's hard and you push and you push through and you get over that that hump and you think, oh, I'm great for a few days, weeks. And then there's another thing that you have to go through. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's it's okay because you're you're better off. Great. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So you you definitely set a great example because, you know, the people that you've attracted are like that. Yeah. 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 So it was awesome yesterday. So speaking of oils... Okay, we have some oils to help you make changes. <laughs> so for everybody that's listening, cypress is an oil of motion and flow. It help, helps you stop procrastinating and, you know, release the stagnation. Just get going. If you are stuck and you don't know why, use cypress for a few days. If you, you know, burst out in a puddle of tears, great. <laughs> Let <laughs> Let it be, (laughs) right? You'll get over it. You'll be okay at the end, all right? I've had several people texting me, especially the ladies that are doing Diamond Club. They they freak out and then they cry their eyeballs out and I I tell them, you're okay, you can keep going, you're you're strong. (laughs) And in the end, they're like, oh, my goodness. And then they text me back, sorry for this up and down and emotional roller coaster. I'm like, no, no, that's all of us. It's the brave people that allow themselves to go through it. So people that feel this intense feeling and they shut it down and they hold themselves back, those are the people that are fearful. So I say go for it. Basil is the oil of renewal and change. So just, you know, renew the way you think, renew the way um, you view everything. Okay, that's Basil. Use it however you are inspired to Mm -hmm. okay so we have motivate of course it's for motivation but it's encouraging it's hopeful it's energizing and it helps you have confidence okay 
So just use that as much as you like if, you're, if you feel like you need that motivation. And you know, some days, especially today for me, because I have a lot of jet lag, <laughs> you know, I you know, put a lot of <laughs> peppermint oil on and then I smell all sorts of oils because I'm like, I know this is, you know, inside of me. It's not, you know, I'm not going to give in to this. And then I'm putting this headphone on and listening to really high pumped up music. I'm like, I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> and you do, right? If you give into it, you know, crawl into bed and just cover, put the covers over and just waste your day away. You can do that too. But yeah, get over it if you, if you want to. <clears throat> um, coriander. So coriander, what's this oil about, guys? Do you remember? Is that one protection against negative and that sort of, does Yeah, it, it does do that. It's yeah. uh, the oil of integrity. It says you can be yourself. Like what you were saying, Lucy, you, you're finding yourself again. Yeah. And it's a, actually a better version of who you ever were, right? Um, and that's, that's it. So we don't need to um, conform Right, because this is a business where it's it's not for the faint-hearted, is it? You know, you have negative people, you have naysayers even in your own home, yeah. and you just have to stick with your guns and say, "Look, I feel so strongly about this. It doesn't make sense. Some in some ways, I know, but I'm just going to still do what I want to do." Okay, so coriander does that for you. Um, you just take it internally, smell it. You know, remind yourself, I'm going to be me. <laughs> I'm going to be me. Because you get lots of people that, that tell you, no, you can't do this. You know, this is crazy. This is this pyramid. This is whatever. And, you, you know, they're not successful people. They have never been successful in doTERRA. Why are they telling you to be, you know, that you, you're unsuccessful, you can't be successful? It doesn't make sense. So I tell people, get successful uh, advice from successful people. <laughs> and can listen to others. Yeah. Yep. And then Mr. Cardamom, um, I guess we can say Miss Cardamom, is an oil to help you be objective. Get take yourself out of the picture and see yourself um, from a spectator's um, viewpoint perspective, and so you can see yourself, you know, in a better light and say, look, I have these concerns, I have these blocks, I can see that now, and I can remove that. And so if you allow yourself to, to fall into the, the pits and um, let it take over you, you, you won't be able to see. Same, same way with, um, you know, you seeing problems in other people, but you can't see problems in yourself, and sometimes people don't, you know, can, can't see their own stuff. So cardamom helps you get out and see your own stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why cardamom is great for breathing, respiratory, great for gut health. Because gut and, you know, the third chakra is all about action, action, action. Okay, respiratory, breathe in the air of life. Get going. Yep. So these are the oils that can help you change. And it's just a few, but there's tons more. But I, I just thought, you know, I'll share these with you. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Honey? Um, yeah, good oils. <laughs> I don't have anything no, to say on okay. Alrighty, so the next thing we want to do is talk about change the way you think, change your life. Okay? If we continue, you know, that, you, that saying um, insanity, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So, you know, people to push and push and push and push hard and push harder and they don't know why they're not succeeding and they continue to push and push and push the same old way. And so that's insanity. So if, if things are not working properly or the way you want it, seek advice and get help from different people and look at some, a situation from a different point of view. Yeah? So we were privileged, Ben and I were privileged to meet Stephen Covey. And this is the, the first time that, when we were in college, it was the first time that I um, saw this picture here. So this picture, um, if you look at it, depending on how you look at it, you can see 
a young woman, no, or you can see an old lady. Can you see both? Yeah. So this is from Stephen Covey's book. Um, yeah. Seven habits. habits. Can, can you see both people in there? I only see one. Okay. What? What? Which one? Do you, can you see? The younger woman. Uh huh. Okay. And so look at so, um, the old woman. Okay. Her chin is is that lady's neck. The young lady's neck. That's her long chin. So yeah. So this is the the, the old That's woman. Nice. This is her chin, and this is her mouth. And this is her nose, and this is her eye. eye. You yeah. see it now? Yeah. <laughs> and the young woman, this is her eye, this is her ear, this is her chin, this is her necklace, this is her yeah. bodice. Like her fluffy, furry yeah. coat. It's really cool. Yeah. So when we did this activity at, uh, at college, he halved the room and he said, okay, everybody in this room, I want to show you a picture of an old lady. So they were looking for an old lady and they saw her. <clears throat> and then he said, I'll show you another. And then this group, I'll show you a young lady. And so everyone is looking for the young lady, they see it. And then he, he says, okay, now everybody open your eyes. And he showed the same picture. And he said, um, you, you both saw the same picture. And, um, you know, and they're like, no, no. And they're starting to argue with each other. No, no, that's an old lady. No, no, it's a young lady. Because they saw what they were asked to see or they saw what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said, that's what we do. Sometimes we only see one way. Um, you know, but if we change the way we think, we see something different sometimes. Mm. Yeah. So um, my husband tells me all the time that um, whatever you focus on, you will find. <laughs> so it's okay if you wear, you know, rose-colored glasses or whatever, because you, if you look for, for that positive, you actually grow it. Um, people that entertain um, negativity or they entertain fears, over time, they create those fears. So the longer you sit on it, the longer you entertain that. Um, so that's why people that have those things, I tell them to use juniper berry because juniper berry stops them from making those pictures and videos in their minds of those fears because they think it long enough, it's going to um, happen. So just let yourself wear rose colored glasses and see yourself as successful people. Um, see your team grow. Um, visualize all that um, it, it's been amazing for for us because I've, I've visualized a lot of things and it's it's come true <laughs> yeah and it's it's just really nice to have a life like that very liberating did you want to say anything about that anything what do you think it's true it's good <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the more you go ahead and focus on the negative, the more you put yourself in even more negative thoughts. So it's really about your mind thought. Um, and you know, God created our minds to think positive. So I think that really going ahead and focusing on God is going to help you stay in the mindset that he created us to have. Yep, I 100% agree with that. That's excellent, Desiree. And like you said earlier, um, you know, when you feel that negativity, you're going to work on getting rid of it. You know, you don't want to entertain that. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and I'll show you, ooh, it didn't work out. <laughs> this is on the iPad. So I did it on my laptop. Anywho, I'll get a better version of this for you guys. Um, but when your body... Um, we have a lot of subconscious thoughts. So it's sort of like our body focusing on stuff. And when you focus on long enough, you create a physical problem and your body will tell you what the physical problem is. So I'm really pooped that this is all squished together. But if we start with the, the feet and go around to the other side, um, so you see the feet here. Feet is about fear of the future. So when we see people with feet problems, you know, with the spiritual eyes that we have now, we can actually you know, guess pretty accurately that they might have a lot of fear of moving forward. Okay, so we have fat. <laughs> Sometimes I have people come to me and say, look, I have gained so much weight and I do not know why. And I ask them, have you been very stressed? 
you know, it's another way of saying, have you been very scared and fearful? Um, and they say, yes, of course. And this here is because that fear uh, um, happens to be there. Your body starts to put cushions in and start using that as protection. Yeah, so that's one way your body manifests fear. Okay, and um, I've helped some people release emotions of fear and they've released fat too. One lady, she lost three pounds in one night. <laughs> you know, Cause she's like, what? I haven't lost, I've been able to lose. It was like 49.5 pounds. She wanted to lose 50 pounds and she hasn't you know, checked that box yet. And she's like, I'm going backwards. And so, you know, after talking to me, crying a bucket load, the next morning she texts me and she's like, I lost three pounds in my sleep. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so the hips. Hips is fear of making major decisions. Left arm is not receiving enough um, for self spiritually. Um, shoulders is bearing. I'm, I spelt that wrong. I should fix that. Bearing burden that doesn't belong to you. Okay, so carrying too many people's responsibilities. We have to let them figure things out too. Um, head, when your head hurts, you've got problems with your head. It's being impatient with self, holding on to limitations. It's like I can't wrap my head around it um, kind of deal. All right, neck is inflexible state of mind. Okay, because um, you, like you, you said, uh, Desiree, God tells you stuff. You know, when your body, your neck is inflexible, it's sort of like, God turning you, you know, the neck moves the head, right? <laughs> My big fat Greek wedding. Um, so, you know, if the neck says, look, I'm hurting, you have to ask yourself, well, what am I not seeing? Yeah. Am I not seeing other people's viewpoint? And I'm not seeing this situation in a different way. Okay, and that gives you a clue and that, that will help. And when it, it's gone, that feeling is gone, then you've resolved it. That's how you gauge. I don't know why a lot of people keep telling me, um, giving me excuses and reasons. And I said, this is because of this reason. And they said, well, I'm very flexible. I'm like this. And I said, don't explain to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pointing it out that, and, and you will know when you've resolved it fully. And maybe you've started the journey, but when it alleviates, it's so much better. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I was one of the worst people with neck, shoulder problems, caring a lot. And recently it's just so much better. And I just learned to delegate, I guess, <laughs> learn to share the load. Um, so that's really good that way. So this next one is um, the arm, but it's like the right arm. And it's not giving enough for your, to yourself. Okay, that's physical, physical um, attention. For the elbows, it's uh, inability to accept new experiences. Um, knees, inflexibility and stubbornness. Okay, stubbornness as in, as in um, not feeling, uh, not changing in a way that um, would be beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, I had uh, knee problems right before I moved to the country, just for like the day. And, you know, I figured that it was stubbornness about moving. And that, you know, that move was good for us. And, you know, I was supposed to help people in some ways that I didn't, re I didn't understand at the time. But later on, I looked back and I thought that was really important that we did that. Yeah. Okay. And ankles, feeling guilty and fearing failing, feeling of failing. So that's just a, another way of helping you focus your mind so that, um, you know, your body gives you a clue of how to change because we're talking about um, changing our mind, you know, improving our mind, but you don't know where to start sometimes. And this is one place that you can start. Okay. So there's lots of... This is pretty on the mic. It's on the button. I know someone here. I know that person. Yeah. Um, more information in the book, Feelings Buried Alive, Never Die. Um, Louise Hay has her version, very similar. If you buy both, you can look one up and then the other one up and you think, oh, it's the same stuff. They're both telling you the same things. Mm -hmm. um, and that, for us, when we have more spiritual awareness and um, spiritual vision, we can actually see these messages in our body 
and that will give us a nice clue where to start to change. Yeah. So that fear of making major decisions, is that on the wrist or the hip? That's the hip. The hip. Hip, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Next. Right. Yep. Okay. So your business grows at the rate your mind grows. Yeah, I, I think uh, I have to give it to Jessie Remus um, at convention. She's one of the, the, she's the youngest presidential diamond in Australia um, and in all of doTERRA, I think. Um, yeah. But anyways, she said that one time um, she drove eight hours to a class and when she got there, no one turned up. And then she drove eight hours home in tears. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, she left her kids and all of these things. Her car was like a bomb <laughs> and, you know, it, was, it died all the time. Um, and she paid the mechanic in oils because she didn't have the funds to pay him. It was just awesome. And she, she said she'll wake up and then she'll tell herself, she'll do tapping and she'll tell herself she smells the oil. She says she has all of these oils right here and it's like a daily habit. She has, you know, and she'll tell herself all these positive affirmations over and over and over. So she's forcing herself to grow fast, right? Some people, if they think, oh, that's just too hard, I'm going to give it a break for a couple of months. I've had people tell me, I'm going to have a break from oils. And when I told my sister that, she's like, oh, <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> you know, it's what? Yeah, because it's like, whoa, too much change, whoa. <laughs> so anyway, she just forced herself to change that way. And that's why she's successful. You know, that's amazing. Yep. So what do you think? Do you agree? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So if this is, um, I'm talking to the, the, the choir here, but it's those people that really, don't know why their business is not growing, will maybe consider um, doing some personal development. And it doesn't have to be a whole heap and you spend thousands of dollars going to all, all sorts of conventions and things. It's just every day, just 15 minutes every day. Or I like to listen to things. I'm very audible. <laughs> I like to listen to it in the car, in the you know, drive. Um, I like to listen to it while I do crafts. And then I write down little inspirations as I hear things because I, I, I feel like I get a big picture of it. But then there's other times that I would have a book next to my bed for a whole year and I'd read a chapter. Oh, no, no, not even a chapter, sorry, like three or four pages only a day. And then I just take a while to digest and it takes me a whole year. Yeah. And Ben mm -hmm. and I, we, we would discuss things um, that we learn together. Um, yeah. So here are the top four books that we like to share with people. Uh, mm -hmm. I think um, The Millionaire Next Door is in an audio book, but The Millionaire Women Next Door isn't. The Women Came After. This, this book, uh, Women, came after the original Millionaire Next Door. And I like this better because it's the, the other book and more. <laughs> okay. So we have The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, um, The Millionaire Women Next Door, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So if anybody wants to start um, personal development, there's a ton of books out there, but this is my top four. Um, yeah, so have you guys had um, a chance to read any of these or? No. I've got three of them. I haven't got the millionaire woman next door, and I've dabbled, but I need to. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. These books we really studied, and we have audios, and we have the book versions, and we listen to them um, every year. So, yeah. Anyways, when if you're frustrated with your business and your your experience, and you feel like you don't know stuff, um, invest in yourself. And it's not very expensive. These books are pretty um, decent price but it really changes you okay so let's talk about the slight edge um, so I, I think I've listened to it three times and read it uh, one time all the way through 
um, but every year we, uh, we re review this. So <clears throat> basically the slight edge, um, you can see the two arrows going two different directions. Everybody starts at the same place, you know. It, it's like um, people investing money. Sometimes you just invest as a penny, right? Um, and so the arrow going up, it says, what's uncomfortable early becomes comfortable later. Okay, so it's telling you that when you're doing something new, it's going to be uncomfortable. So like a... Desiree saying we've got these emotions and fears and things that we just got to toss out and it, it is uncomfortable but afterwards because you've gone through that it becomes easier and more comfortable and you know there are people that um, don't continue that and they, they take the easy way so you're going down um, so what's comfortable early right becomes uncomfortable later yeah. right and 95% of people choose that path he says um so jeff olsen and then five percent of the people realize realize their dreams okay so you're gonna be an oddball <laughs> but you have to keep on that path and just keep moving so with that the philosophy is one of the first things we need to um focus on which is your belief okay and your attitude like you said try to stay positive and actions um Actions is like your habits and um, your culture, and then the results come. And you can do this, uh, you understand this slight edge principle for everything, for finance, for health, for business, for your personal development, and your relationship. Anywhere that you want to improve, you do that. So you do small and simple things daily to help improve whatever it is. So it's like your business, you do rain-making activities every day. <laughs> even if it's like half an hour, right? Don't just shove it all into one day because you lose that momentum. Um, so I tell people all the time, have a doTERRA power hour. If you don't, you feel like you don't have a lot of time in your, your schedule, do a doTERRA power hour, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, 15 minutes um, doing different tasks. So I, I tell people to um, do 15 minutes prospecting, like answer the emails or friend somebody on Facebook and share something with them, send a uh, sample, and then you have another 15 minutes to check your team, to give them support, and you know, that's the idea. So, um, you know, what we do is something very simple, just like I said, 15 minutes of certain activities, like give yourself an hour, so four activities in that hour, like this power hour that you're just cranking out, but every day. So one hour, just spending one hour is, is simple, really, but it's simple to do and it's <laughs> Not to do this that's what the slight edge is about or like your health it's simple to go for a 20 minute walk but it's simple not to do a 20 minute walk but every day it accumulates and then it makes a difference the first couple of days it won't make any difference you see that where it starts you know there's not a huge difference between the people that are on top and the people that are on the bottom it doesn't matter. But over time, the difference is going to be huge. And you'll see that difference because you're traveling that direction. So this, is, this book is awesome. But here he says the people that are on top, they're, respons they have, they're responsible, they're disciplined, they're value-driven. And the people here on the bottom, they blame, they neglect, and they feel entitled. You know? So it's really cool. Just listen to that. Any Comments, questions? No. All righty. So um, basically there's six, six parts to this. He tells people to stay in motion. So do small and simple things daily. Um, to be responsible for your actions, thoughts, beliefs, and attitude. Um, the power of completion to get things done. Check things off your list. Go through everything that you've not completed and do that and just keep your life simple anything that you haven't completed even like projects he said it holds you back in the future yeah and that's that's why we want to complete things so don't start anything until you can you know you can finish it quickly <laughs> yeah um the power of habit so you know the culture trumps um vision every time you know you can have a you know picture of what you want but what you do <laughs> will either lead you there or not. 
yeah. you see. And one very important thing is plan, do, review. So always reflect, is this leading me that direction? Is it not? Um, and then celebrate. It's really important to have that joy to, to feed that momentum. So, yeah, just butt in if you want to say. <laughs> no, you're doing well. Okay. I've taken over the show. All right. Any questions? No comments. It makes a lot of sense. And he gives yeah. examples so that, um, you know, you can really apply that to your life. Okay. And uh, a quote, uh, two quotes here. Successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. It's simple, mm -hmm. but it's a consistent thing. And people are unwilling. Um, he said, you just have to get out of your comfort zone. And I'm going to explain comfort zone a little bit for people. When people are nervous about um, going outside the comfort zone, what they're fearful of is going into the frustration zone. Okay, so when you go really way out of your comfort zone, you get frustrated and you don't want that. So in the teacher world, we give students um, like a, a book that is one um, level higher than what they can really read, right? Because then it just pushes them a little bit outside their comfort zone where they're learning and growing, but it doesn't push them too far that they become frustrated and want to give up. So that's your instructional zone. So if you are, you know, feeling really uncomfortable about something, you can knock it down to slightly uncomfortable where it's instructional for you. But if you're too uncomfortable, just know that, you know, you've got to push yourself a little bit and get out there. Make sense? That way it's doable and it's not all the way frustrating and scary. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like he said, with the completion, he said, people who live on the success curve are pulled by the future. While those who dwell on the few, uh, on failure curve are pulled by the past, and that's you know if you don't have things completed, um, you know you're always sitting there and looking back at the past, being pulled back. Can you just check Ivy, Nev, Nev? Sorry. <laughs> All right, the other thing is, um, that's what coriander helps us do, is to not worry about what others... Mm. I have to change that. <laughs> I did this very quickly. Um, on jet lag time. <laughs> so, I mean, if you think about it, the people that were honoured, that are remembered, are people that really did what they felt like they needed to do. And um, they really, you know, didn't allow others to sway them. You know, Mother Teresa Gandhi and, you know, Joan of Arc, you know, kind of um, took other people's advice and just uh, stop what they were doing. They wouldn't have the success that they had because they, they were willing to do something things that other people weren't willing to do. But it's being, it's honoring themselves. It's being who they are. So I like, I like thinking about these people and I like considering myself like that. And so if I get a nice say, I'm thinking, that's okay. You believe what you believe, but in the end, I'm where I want to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be happy. What do you guys think? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'll tell you about the millionaire women next door. Okay. Um, they, they surveyed a, a ton of women that were successful. The reason why they said a millionaire women next door is because they're millionaires that um, are not celebrities and they, you know, they're, they're the common ordinary people. That yeah. you wouldn't. Yeah, when you think about millionaires, a lot of people think about people who spend a lot of money in their yeah, and that. it's got big bling. And but the truth is, they're they're just frugal people, and you know they could be like just an ordinary person, 
Yeah. Um, you wouldn't think that they're a millionaire by looking at them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I have a few family members like that and I really admire them because they, they're, they're ordinary and, um, you know, it's a very good example of, uh, um, you know, because they have charity, they have a heart of charity. They, they give to charities that they're passionate about without um, making a big fuss and a fanfare about it, making sure everybody knows, you know, they support what they want to support. And they're very passionate about freedom. That's what I got from this. Um, you know, they, they rather have a pay cut and be their own boss sometimes and um, own, their own, um, own their own life, really than uh, to allow others to, um, you know, tell them when they can have a break, when they can have a holiday, mm-hmm. whatever. So I, I feel very connected to that because, you know, there's times when I had my kids um, had activities at their school when if I'm working, I, I can't go. And that is not a great feeling. Right. So I want to be there for them right so very passionate about freedom um they have a very strong personal satisfaction in work that they do so whatever they're they're doing they're doing it with a passion um and because they're satisfied they they're not huge huge spenders so um that's the other thing too they have a clear purpose of what they're doing and what they're trying to achieve and you know the different things that they're doing i just you know boil it down to the slight edge principle so they know to do things consistently they know to rock up they know to wake early all that stuff um they feel empowered and they honor self okay and Mm -hmm. um, they continue to have personal growth um somehow you know they invest in themselves they they go out and learn new skills whatever skills they feel like they need for that purpose that they they have so amazing amazing book it took me a year to read that one (laughs) because every few pages i'm like highlighting writing notes writing notes and i studied that book so yeah but it really helps you if you want to have um a abundant mentality you need to think like these people yeah yeah and um, there's other books. That, one book I was reading is um, The Bridge Across uh, Poverty. And they listed attributes of poor people. And, you know, you, you don't want those characteristics. And sometimes we don't even realize that we have those characteristics. You really have to identify uh, what it is and then get rid of it. All right. Good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the next one is how to win friends and influence people. I read this when I was 12, actually. <laughs> yeah. So my parents joined Amway and um, they bought a whole bunch of products they didn't know what to do with. And um, they got this book with that. And so I said, oh, book, I want to be smart. <laughs> so I started reading it. And it was awesome, very enlightening for a kid. Um, but basically, I boiled it down to a few things here is empathy. Right, just be in their shoes, know what they need, um, and uh, smile, listen well, remember people's names, okay. and then love others and show respect. And that, that's awesome. He gives examples of how to do that. Um, and be a leader, ask questions and encourage. So being a leader is sort of like the other books too, isn't it? Honoring yourself. And, um, yeah, and be this learner because if you're a great learner you you allow others to follow your example and be humble and um, open to changes Mm -hmm. it's an awesome book and i read it again and we have it on on audiobook too yeah a really good book and it's still a classic yeah and i tell you this is important because i've seen so many people they don't know how to make friends and this business is about making friends you are a professional friend maker <laughs> <laughs> very very true and if you cannot um, make friends and and connect with people you can have a really hard time mm-hmm. yeah anyone anything, anything you want to say honey no uh, that's good okay so why don't you take over this one
All right, so this is the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen R. Covey. Um, like Jade said, a little bit about um, Mr. Covey. So here's the seven habits. Be proactive. Um, that's basically, um, you have to act. You have to believe that you can make a change. Um, beginning with the end in mind, he basically um, talks about, you know, there's two creations. There's a mental creation and a physical creation. So you have to start with, where it is you want to go. That's why it's important to have a vision board or have a mission statement. And that's where he talks about mission statements. You know, you're, you know where you're going because if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't matter. You're just spinning your wheels. And you're not going to get where you want to go because you don't know yeah. where you're going. That's why we encourage people to have their whys and keep involving that. And number three is put first things first. This is basically the slight edge, right? It's just um, doing the daily tasks. Um, he, uh, Mr. Kevin talks about um, scheduling your priorities instead of prioritizing your schedule. So it's not like you have your schedule and you mix things around, um, but rather you start with what you want to do and then you say, well, if this is my end goal, what sort of tasks do I need to do that goal? And then schedule those tasks and let everything else fall to the wayside. If it's a really important stuff, it needs to be on there. If it's not important, um, then you, you shouldn't react. do it at all. Mm -hmm. It's not important, it shouldn't be on your schedule. So he breaks things into what's important, what's urgent, what's not important, what's not urgent. Yeah. You're spending all your time doing things that are important and not yeah. urgent. All right, think win-win. Um, so the first three have to do with um, your interpersonal, your inside, um, you inside. Four, five, and six have to do with your interactions with others. So think win-win means that you're coming up with uh, solutions, um, that not necessarily compromises, but synergistic. Uh, and, and Six talks about this as well, but you're, you're also, um, it's like Dale Carnegie says, you're interested in what the other person is interested in. And you're trying to find a solution that will solve both of those. It's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a like, Mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive uh, thing, where, um, but rather it's something where you can use your imagination to come up with a solution that um, is best for all parties. Um, five, six, first to understand, then to be understood. Also, um, uh, Del Carnegie talks about this. Um, sometimes people just want to talk and they just want to be understood. And if you just understand their point of view and let them be heard, um, then you'll be able to um, communicate back to them. But if you're, everybody's just out there pushing their agenda and no one's hearing their message, they're just speak louder, it's louder and louder until they're shouting and no one's understanding them and they're not understanding you as well. So, you know, to have that, um, that success on an interpersonal level, so it's, it's not about being independent. Um, Stephen Covey talks, talks about, you know, dependence. <laughs> interdependence and independence um we don't want to be dependent right we don't want to have to rely on people to feed us um independence is good but it's not best. it's not the best you know being able to do everything yourself um that, that's good that's better than dependence but there's a much higher law of living that's interdependence or you have some great skills someone else has some great skills and you work together and you, and you lift the boat and that's what six is about is where you are working with others and you are creating something much better than anyone can do on themselves by themselves. That's important for leaders because you don't have all the skills. <laughs> and the last one, sharpen the saw. That's all about um, going back through all of these first six and, and reviewing, reviewing and, and just um, reviewing your day, reviewing your week, reviewing your performance on all these levels, and saying, I neither. Maybe change this up a notch or change that up a notch. And yeah, that's what that book is basically about. And still, people, a lot of it's, it's an older book, um, not as quite as old as uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, but it's still very, um, very uh, highly used and highly um, recommended mm -hmm. book. Yeah. So there it is in a nutshell. And that's actually the last one. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Let's read those books. They're on my bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know what? Sometimes it's hard to find time. Um, you can 
if you do have a um what do you call it a like audio book or something like that you can have it read to you mm -hmm. okay. yeah if An you audio would definitely be good for the sydney trips mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah if you do also have um sometimes like i'll buy the i ibook or the ebook um yeah. or i don't have the audio books not available and there's a feature on those phones where um you just turn on voiceover and have the, the book read itself to you so it's a robotic. robotic it's a robotic voice but you know when i was going to law school i i a lot of books i read like that on my way to do it, you know like you're saying um while yeah, 20 you're minutes drive driving here and there you can it adds up uh, yeah yeah like when I wash dishes, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. listen to a book. And, I do that with dishes. Um, yeah. So yeah. If, if you can't get the audio book, but you can get the ebook, you can use that feature to have it read to you. We like the physical book because you get to see charts and you, you look back and you can highlight stuff. Yeah, I'm a bit of a highlighter. Mm -hmm. You can also highlight in, uh, in ebooks and stuff. Yeah. Oh, there's something like about physicality. Through. Yeah. yeah. And visualizing where that quote was and whatever. Yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. So is it was there anything that stood out to you today that um perhaps you didn't realise before? Um I'd say I don't have any of these books and I haven't read any of them, so I think that I need to just pick one and read through it because I think that'd be really helpful. Yeah. Yep, whichever one, because they're, they're very similar. They're all very similar, aren't they? Yeah. But they, they would explain things in a different way, and sometimes it, you get it more the way this guy explains it. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I still like all of them. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think, too, it's just really organising that hour of power and making the time that you give to doTERRA really productive. That's why I'm really getting a message for me. I've got to make this productive and get rid of the distractions. Yeah. One of the first things that I learned um, is you know, being proactive. So like Ben said, what do you want? And then put that on your schedule, not what's happening in life and then putting that on your schedule. Because if that's not leading you to your success, then toss that out. You know, so look at your schedule and, and eliminate stuff that is just You're getting a lot more of those unimportant things done that won't get you anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what you want. <laughs> I, I was um, in an area one time that at church, all the ladies at church, uh, I think they were making more work for themselves because they were meeting for book club and they were meeting for homemaking and they were meeting for all sorts of things. And I just felt really pressured to go to them. And then I realized, wait a minute, this is not really helping me with my eternal progression, right? Attending all of those and leaving my kids. And I have this business I really want to work on. So I had to pick and choose. What's the most important thing? Sunday sacrament. And, um, you know, the meetings that I really have to go to. And I just have to say no to some of the other things and still feel like I'm a good person. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in the end, you know, I'm where I want to be and I put whatever the schedule that I want to make for myself and then I'm living the life I want. I'm not reactionary. So when my phone rings, I don't answer every call. You know, I call them back when I'm ready. Um, you know, I can do the business and text people back when I feel like. Not when, you know. Yeah. So I, I learned that. That was one of the first things I learned. I thought, oh, okay, I'm actually reactionary. <laughs> that's why I feel so stressed and tired all the time because I'm letting people call the shots. Yeah. So having classes, I was telling um, Aaron last night, you set the classes up the time that is convenient for you and your family. You know, we, we, we have an open day where we can schedule different times and that, um, that's good. But your time, every Thursday we have a class at seven o'clock at this place and that's it. And if they can make it, they can make it. If not, then there's other things online. Other, there's other places, but you're not going to bend over backwards. And um, yeah, but then you find that people will change their schedule to come. Right. And if they do come, they meet you there, then they're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes when you, you give too much, you bend over backwards too much, they don't appreciate it. 
and you're attracting the wrong kind of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I tell the, her, don't worry if that those people didn't rock up because they're not meant to be on your team. You probably don't want to right. have them, you know, associate with them too much anyways. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you're really going ahead and you're pulling that weight to make that connection with them and to get them to do what they need to do, then it's really not worth spending your time and energy into that because that's time and energy that you could be spending with somebody else or doing something else that's going to help you. Yeah, yeah, the win-win. <laughs> you're not winning as well. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. I would say... Um, do it a little bit at a time. Don't feel rushed to read all of it and, ex and understand all of it because you, you're allowing yourself to grow um, a little at a time. I have met people that have read nearly every book that I've suggested. Mm -hmm. You know what? They're still not doing anything. Because they haven't applied any of it. They're great. <laughs> I have a, the, you know, the school answer for that and book answer for that but they haven't applied it to their lives. And that's why I said, I take a year to read some of these. Well, you, know, you can read a novel in a couple of days, but these are not novels. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you read a principle and you have to ponder over it and see how it applies to you, how you can apply that and how you can share that with others. I always try to teach it as soon as I learn it. And you know, learning it means I've applied it and then I think, oh, it works. Now I'm gonna share it with people and it solidifies my learning. It takes a while. It takes a year <laughs> yeah well i mean if you think about it in school and you have these different subjects but you work on different sections of that at a time so you know it really takes that time to go ahead and learn it all and then be able to absorb it to apply it mm -hmm. there's been one lady that i've asked her to stop um i said enough reading you've you have all the books now you have all the knowledge it's time to act take action. And I said, if you don't know something uh, like a, a particular detail for that particular situation, I said, just ask God, you have vertical truth. You have access to heaven <laughs> and God will guide you in that particular moment to understand the principle and apply that principle to the situation. So I said, enough the horizontal truth. These books are fantastic, but you've gotten enough here. Now it's time to just apply. Yeah. Well, I think that's it for tonight. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop. <laughs>